Berlin on a Tuesday evening, and as usual, there's a line of people waiting to get into cookies. Anyone who manages to get past the doorman has made it into one of the city's most exciting venues. It's only open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think it's very innovative. The music's a bit different and the crowd's very mixed. It's a lot different, you know, the, it's a very relaxed crowd, very casual, but the music's great and it's a great atmosphere, so you, know, you don't have to try too hard, but you get inside, it's great, it's really good. The world's top DJs are all keen to get behind the turntables at Cookies. German DJs Sven Veit and West Bam and even the Pet Shop Boys have all spun discs here. It's a club with a family atmosphere. Its owner, Cookie, still tends the bar himself now and then. If a club's going to be a lasting success, then you need a personal touch. And because I'm really still here every Tuesday and Thursday when I'm in Berlin, it wouldn't be possible to take the club and relocate it. It started out as an illegal club in the basement of Cookie's house, one of the numerous makeshift clubs to spring up in the former East Berlin's many vacant spaces. Back then, it was normal to only open one or two nights a week. The same guests would always come on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They were friends, acquaintances and friends of friends who heard about it and would drop by every week. If anyone came once, they always came back. But these illegal clubs were always being evicted, and Cookies was no exception. It moved six times before settling up in a disused factory in 1999. By now, it had become world-renowned and famous for its strict door policy. The problem with a club that's well known is that if you just let anyone in, no one would feel comfortable. That's just the way it is. The club has continued to expand. In 2000, it moved into the service hall of a former bank and stayed there until two years ago, when it reopened in the spacious former cinema at the Westin Grand Hotel. Its motto, just for friends, is still the guiding principle. Everyone who gets in at Cookies feels comfortable. They're here because they want to have a good time. What car you arrive in or whether you're on unemployment just doesn't matter. But Cookies' friends aren't just into mindless partying. 2003 saw the introduction of the Yellow Lounge, a series of classical concerts. At Cookies, subculture meets high culture. The idea behind Cookies is that there's no advertising. You have to know where it is and when it is, and it's become a legend by word of mouth. That's what's behind all the hype, and that's why everyone wants to be a part of it. No one knows how much longer cookies can survive. That's why every Tuesday and Thursday, revelers party as if it were the very last time.